so good morning everyone this is dr vineet sehgal and welcome to this early morning session of the numero uno in ophthalmology you can see all my videos live and exclusively on the an academy learning app by downloading it from the i store or the play store and also you can subscribe for the platform by using my code ophthal10 and basically have an advantage of various live classes going on throughout day and throughout night basically telling you what to basically prepare for the neat pg and the fmg exams okay you can also subscribe for the iconic subscription where you have advantage of the an academy as well as prep letter platform where you can get a question bank 2.0 rapid revision course handwritten notes and a structured schedule of the plus live classes you can use the code of tel10 you can put it in the column and basically get a 10% discount on whatever course that you want with this i would be starting my session today that is on retinal dystrophy so before i start the session this is the compulsory voice and the video check am i audible everyone okay chalo so let's start with the topic retinal dystrophy so in the retinal dystrophy the topics that we would discuss today would be the most important ones through which the questions are asked these are the most common retinal dystrophy that is retinitis pigmentosa we would talk about stargardt's disease also called fundus flavi maculatus we would talk about labor congenital amaurosis we would talk about oguchi disease we would talk about gyrated trophy okay so these are the dose there are lots of lots of dystrophies basically in this session we would talk about these diseases okay so first of all we come to the retinitis pigmentosa so the question they can ask is how a retinitis pigmentosa patient can come okay so what i would say is what can be the clinical scenario in a patient who is suffering from retinitis pigmentosa now remember this is a disease which is basically there uh, from the birth but it usually presents after second or third decade of life okay so it is usually there in the adulthood so the patient is not a one year or two year old child like a retinoblastoma it is usually a 25 to 30 year old male okay so it is basically a 30 year old male he says that sir gradual blurring of vision is there but this blurring is more in the night as compared to day okay so very important point is that there is a more diminution of night vision as compared to the day vision okay and he says that he has similar complaints in the family also so it may be having a autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive inheritance pattern okay so i repeat the clinical scenario can be a two so a patient in the second or third decade of life he came to the opd with gradual blurring of vision diminution of night vision which i also called nectalopia okay so can you tell me any vitamin deficiency which can also cause nectalopia so yes it is vitamin a deficiency okay and it may be having a specific genetic pattern specific inheritance pattern now retinitis pigmentosa is the most common hereditary fundus dystrophy okay if you see 10 patients of retinal dystrophy 7 to 8 patients of them are because of the retinitis pigmentosa that is why because it can have a variety of inheritance pattern it can have autosomal dominant autosomal recessive and even x-link recessive remember the x-link recessive is the most severe part of rp so i basically underline it x-link recessive is most severe form of retinitis pigmentosa if they ask most common then most common is autosomal dominant if they ask most common in relation to the various syndromes let's say patient is having a systemic problem also i would tell you what are the systemic associations and the patient is having a retinitis pigmentosa then most commonly it is autosomal recessive then that is the inheritance pattern what is the pathogenesis as you can see retinitis pigmentosa so there would be a pigments in the retina okay and here 
the gene that is affected is called rhodopsin gene okay initially it affects rods but even the cones are affected in the later stages okay so in short if i tell about the pathogenesis the gene affected is the rhodopsin gene and initial effect is on the rods and the final effect would be even on the cones okay then there can be various types of variations so the main one is that let's say this is your fundus so you may be having as i told you pigments in the mid peripheral region okay like this pigments in the mid peripheral region but are these pigments the characteristic of retinitis pigmentosa the answer is no sometimes you may have a patient who is not having pigments black pigments we call it bony spicule pigments sometimes the patient may have not black color they may be having a whitish colored lesion sometimes the patient has more effect on the cones as compared to rods okay so the variants are first is cone rod dystrophy where cones are affected more where cones are affected more sometimes the patient has sinus pigmento sinus means the patient is having absence of pigmentation and sometimes instead of black the patient has white pigments so this is called rp albinism okay so have you sir, heard the word albinism so from the word albinism you can basically see that it can be a albinic fundus also so you would ask me sir what is the most you said that there would be bony spicule pigmentations now you are saying that there are some uh, some a uh, variants which does not have bony spicule variation so basically what are the characteristic features through which we can say this patient is having a retinitis pigmentosa so with this i would basically tell you a triad of symptoms sorry a triad of signs okay so first of all they are seen more commonly around the arcades what is the meaning of arcades near the blood vessels and in the mid periphery these pigmentations okay and the one the triad that you have to remember the first and the most consistent feature is arteriolar attenuation so there is a thinning of the arteries like we get in a hypertensive retinopathy na so similarly you would have arteriolar attenuation there would be no hypertension but still the arteries would be very very thin then the second feature is optic atrophy and the third and the foremost feature is bony spicule pigmentation that i told you the black pigmentation okay like this in the mid periphery or in the arcade so if they ask which is the most consistent feature then the most consistent feature of retinitis pigmentosa is arteriolar attenuation this is the most consistent feature okay now the age group that i told you is around 20 to 30 years the chief complaints is the nyctalopia or i also call it night blindness now this was a question which was asked in aims exam 2 years back that in the patients of retinitis pigmentosa the docosa hexanoic acid is it increased or decreased in concentration so these are some points which you just have to cram and i basically uh, per se uh, i feel that these questions should not be asked but if these are asked you cannot do anything only thing is that you can just cram this and expect these type of questions are not asked again so remember docosa hexanoic acid is decreased in the retinitis pigmentosa 
जस्ट नोट इट डाउन विद हैवी हार्ट ओके चल विद दिस वी कम टू द वेरियस एसोसिएशन आई टोल्ड यू देर कैन बी अस्टमिक एसोसिएशन ऑफ रेटेनाइटिस पिगमेंटो सा सो वॉट आर द वेरियस सिस्टमिक एसोसिएशन ऑफ रेटेनाइटिस पिगमेंटो सा सो दीज आर द वेरियस वन आई गिव यू अ स्मॉल निमोनिक सो दैट यू कैन रिमेंबर इट I used to remember it by the lucher. Okay, those who are from the Hindi heartland must be knowing this word. Lucher. So L goes with the Lorentz syndrome. U goes with the Usher syndrome. C goes with the Cockayne syndrome. Okay. H is nothing. Just forget about the H. A goes with the A beta lipoproteinemia. and r goes with the refsum disease okay so these are the main associations of the retinitis pigmentosa two more associations if you want to remember these are the kern syndrome and the bardet bildel syndrome okay <coughs> so bardet bildel syndrome is not a separate syndrome it is a lorenz moon bardet bildel syndrome okay so these are the main associations of the patient who is suffering from the retinitis pigmentosa he may be having some systemic issues as well now how can they present so first thing is if a, if a patient is having a a beta lipoproteinemia okay as you know a beta lipoproteinemia there may be some problem in basically a uh, basically absorption of the fat soluble vitamins okay the patient may also have the deficiency of vitamin a and vitamin e here so in these cases what is there is that infant is having a failure to gain weight he is having retinitis pigmentosa he can have diarrhea he can have fatty foul smelling small foul smelling stools so all these can be the various signs of the patient who is suffering from a beta lipoproteinemia okay so remember a beta lipoproteinemia is a very very important association of the infants who are suffering from the retinitis pigmentosa now why i am basically having a more uh, emphasis on that and why this is my uh, first case scenario the reason is that because usually the rp the retinitis pigmentosa that do not basically uh, get detected early in the early age group i told you they are usually seen in the 20 to 30 year age group okay so even if you have diagnosed a beta lipoproteinemia you basically have to do a retinal screening of the patient so that you can understand if the rp is also there in this patient okay then the second one which you have to remember is a another syndrome which is called kern sare syndrome you must have heard kern sare syndrome where you must have heard about the cpeo the chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia so what happens in a kern sare syndrome that the patient says that sir my eyelids are drooping down so there is a progressive bilateral symmetrical ptosis this patient would also have difficulty in movement of the eye okay so like a myasthenia gravis this can be a presentation but there is no neurological issues in this patient okay it is a mitochondrial myopathy these patient may also have a heart block so these patients are also to be screened for the retina for association with the retinitis pigmentosa the third one and another were important one is the refsum disease refsum disease is basically nothing but accumulation of phytanic acid because the enzyme which degrades the phytanic acid that is basically deficient in these patients because of the accumulation of the phytanic acid there is a peripheral neuropathy there can be ataxia there can be hearing loss there can be retinitis pigmentosa there can be ichthyosis so all these can basically cause i think some issues with the okay now we are back so in these patients you also have to basically rule out 
रेटेनाइटिस पिगमेंटोसा सो यहां पर हमें वॉट वी गेट इफ हाउ बिकॉज दीज आर समिंग्स विच विच हैव लॉट ऑफ पॉइंट लॉट ऑफ फैक्ट दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सो हाउ कैन यू बेसिकली रिमेंबर इट सो सबसे पहले यू थिंक दैट इफ अ पेशेंट इज अ स्मॉल चाइल्ड ही इज हैविंग अ फैटी स्मेलिंग स्टूल देन दीज पेशेंट मे हैव अ रेटनाइटिस पिगमेंटोसा एंड ए बीटा लिपोप्रोटीनिमिया okay then the second pro is that patient is a let's say an adult and he is coming with the ptosis with the heart block and that is with the ophthalmoplegia then it can be a kernsare syndrome then the third one is the patient is a adult he comes with the peripheral polyneuropathy okay he is having more of a ataxia hearing loss and the skin problem so this patient may have a refsum disease also okay so if you can see in this picture this is a picture of a patient who is suffering from the retinitis pigmentosa can you see there is a disc pallor it is not as pink and around the vessels can you see this pigmentation so these are the bony spicule pigmentation and the most consistent feature if you can appreciate these arteries they are very very thin so this is called arteriolar attenuation okay so these are the features of the retinitis pigmentosa then another association that i told you is the lorenz moon bardet bild syndrome so in lorenz moon bardet bild syndrome you would have polydactyly okay polydactyly means lots of fingers you would have a central obesity okay so i write it here lorenz moon bardet bild syndrome so the patient would have rod cone dystrophies patient have multiple fingers i call it polydactyly central obesity okay patient would have some reproductive issues the patient may have hypogonadism okay and the patient may have a diabetic insipidus okay so patient may have also have kidney dysfunction and diabetes insipidus so these are the various associations of a patient who is having a lorenz moon syndrome as well as the retinitis pigmentosa okay then we have a usher syndrome in usher syndrome we have a sensory neural hearing loss and a pigment neuropathy okay chalo then the last one which i would be telling you is the cockayne syndrome in cockayne syndrome we would have a short mm -hmm. stature and failure to thrive we would have a premature aging okay you can just remember there was a picture na pa so similarly there is a premature aging i call it progeria i call it progeria the patient would have a small head but patient would also have a inophthalmos inophthalmos means eyes basically going back okay there is a uh, there is less amount of the orbital tissue so the eyes are basically sunken this is called inophthalmos and these patients also have very small teeth okay this is basically the clinical scenario of cockayne syndrome okay now with this i want to tell you that sometimes these patients of retinitis pigmentosa they are suffering from one problem of the rods and the cones and sometimes they are also having some other ocular morbidities the other ocular morbidity or ocular morbidities that you would get in the retinitis pigmentosa they can have a membrane over the retina okay over the internal limiting membrane they can have a uh, inflammatory membrane this i call it epiretinal membrane okay these patients may also have a posterior subcapsular cataract and they may have a cystic spaces in the macula also so the other ocular associations of these patients are epiretinal membrane posterior subcapsular cataract and cystoid macular edema okay how would you investigate this patient to investigate this patient first thing is you see it clinically 
it is a clinical diagnosis and for the confirmation you do a electroretinogram in electroretinogram your a wave and b wave they are both decreased in the amplitude as well as their latency is increased when we would talk about the erg i would tell you what are the a wave what are the b wave what is the latency what is the amplitude just right now you remember that the in the erg there are lots of variations that are coming in the patient of retinitis pigmentosa and they can have a scotoma like this okay this type of scotoma is called annular scotoma okay this is called a annular scotoma now unfortunately the treatment is not very much advanced in these patients uh, the prognosis is not very good we are basically doing some genetic uh, uh, translocation process i call it crisp car technique we can put a artificial eye we can call it bionic eye the one which i want to basically emphasize here is the advance of the argus 2 epiretinal implants so what they are doing is they are basically putting an implant over the retina and this basically takes the light and this basically then transfers it directly to the optic nerve okay so this is basically a argus 2 epiretinal implant it has been experimentally tried in, tried in retinitis pigmentosa as well as in the patient suffering from age related macular degeneration okay so these are few possibilities which we are basically thinking for the patient of the retinitis pigmentosa so with this i basically end the retinitis pigmentosa discussion now let's concentrate on some other diseases now i would give you another scenario let's say if the patient has come in the first to second decade of life and he says that sir he is having a progressive diminution of vision you say this patient may have a star uh, this patient may have a retinitis pigmentosa but he says that sir i am having decrease in the vision both in the day and in the night but my central vision is basically deteriorated and my ability to see the shape of the objects that is basically compromised so this is called metamorphosia just a minute So I was talking that it is the first and second decade of life which is the patient progressing. The patient comes with the loss of central vision and metamorphosia and this patient when you see the fundus you see that there are some yellowish flecks type lesion which is deposition of the lipofuscian material in the RP in this patient. Okay? And as the shape of the object is more affected so what would be the photoreceptors that would be affected it would be cones so remember the cones are more affected as compared to rods as compared to retinitis pigmentosa where there is a vice versa where the rods are more affected so i revise it again it is there in the first and second decade of life the patient comes with the loss of central vision and metamorphosia the patient has autosomal recessive inheritance pattern there is a lipofuscian deposits in the retinal pigment epithelium and the cones are affected more as compared to the rods okay so this is the one the most important thing regarding the stargardt's disease now how it basically happens it basically happens because of mutation of a very important gene which is called abca4 gene okay so there is a abca4 gene in these patients i told you the ye yellow fleck opacities which are seen why they are seen because the degradation material of the vitamin a they are not cleared from the retina for that you need a abca4 gene Okay, the protein synthesized by the APCA4 gene that you need to basically clear the byproducts of vitamin A metabolism. Now, how would you investigate this patient? First is it is a clinical diagnosis. 
you may say that sir similarly yellowish color lesions may happen in a patient who is suffering from dry rmd but remember a dry rmd the patient would be in 50s or 60s of age here the patient would be in first to second decade of life and when you do a fluorescein angiography you would see a sign which is called dark choroid sign what is the meaning of dark choroid sign usually a choroidal hue comes from the fluorescein angiography okay thoda sa lightish white sa color aapko choroid ka dikhai dega choroidal vessels dikhai deti hai but when you do a fluorescein angiography of the patient who is suffering from staga disease you get a dark choroid sign there is no hue that is coming from the choroid this is a important question and like a pital okay we call it like a bronze you may have like a bronze you may have a beaten bronze appearance in these patients okay so if you can see this is the normal fundus okay in the normal fundus if you have flex like lesion here you have flex like lesions here okay this can be a patient who is suffering from stargardt's disease this is can you see this type of appearance so like a bullseye maculopathy okay so bullseye maculopathy i told you is the presentation of a chloroquine toxicity but the bullseye maculopathy can be seen in the variety of other disorders and here the pigmentation you are seeing this is a bronze colored pigmentation so this is called a beaten bronze appearance so if a patient is there where you are having a beaten bronze appearance and the patient is no not having any history of chloroquine toxicity okay so yes there can be a bullseye maculopathy because of the stargardt's disease which also is called a fundus flavi maculatus okay so the another name of stargardt's disease is fundus flavi maculatus okay chal with this this is the picture where you can have a fundus with the yellowish colored lipofuscin deposits this is called the stargardt's disease okay similar feature can be there in the dry rmd but remember the age would be much much different in both the scenarios okay so next is gyrate atrophy so what happens in a gyrate atrophy there the patient also comes with the nyctalopia but when you see the fundus there would be punched out lesions there okay so i just show you here let's say this is your retina so you would have yellowish colored depigmented lesions in the mid periphery okay this is the mid periphery you would have yellowish colored lesions like here this is basically a gyrate atrophy i call it there are mid peripheral punched out lesions okay why this happens this happens because of the deficiency of an enzyme which is called ornithine amino transferase okay and how you would treat this patient because there is a ornithine amino transferase deficiency so the patient cannot basically metabolize the arginine so arginine toxicity can be there so as a treatment we give arginine free diet to the patient and also give vitamin b6 supplementation to the patient okay 
so the important points that you have to remember regarding the gyrate atrophy so patients presented with decrease in the vision and night blindness there are mid peripheral punched out lesions it occurs due to the deficiency of the ornithine aminotransferase there is a autosomal recessive inheritance pattern and there is a arginine free diet and the vitamin b6 that has to be given to these patients okay so these are some important points regarding the gyrate atrophy now the next one is called oguchi's disease oguchi's disease or is also basically known by name that is the congenital stationary night blindness so the patient is having a specific feature which is called mizuo phenomena what happens in a mizuo phenomena is that the patient says that sir i was having good vision only if i am there for let's say 2 or 3 hours in a dark okay so initially he is having problem in the dark but after 2 to 3 hours there is a dark adaptation and he can see better this patient says that sir when i go to the light normally when we go to the light we see better after few minutes but these patients have bad vision when they go into the light okay similarly when the patient fundus is seen in daylight it is more pale but it becomes normal orangish color this is the orangish color when the patient is then in the night so i would say the normal fundus occurs in the night but it is pale when the patient is seen in the morning or in the daylight this is basically called mizuo phenomena okay and this color change is basically a characteristic of the disease which is called oguchi disease why this happens this happens because there is a impairment in the rod activity and there is a delayed dark adaptation okay so i tell you the most important points there can be the mizuo phenomena the where the patient is able to see better when they are in the dark for some time the color of the fundus is pale in the morning and in the afternoon and it is normal in the night and the patient has impaired rod activity as well as delayed dark adaptation this is called congenital stationary night blindness and remember whenever the patient is having these type of uh, associations where some systemic association is also there most of them they have the autosomal inherit recessive inheritance pattern so both in the oguchi disease as well as in your uh, disease like gyrate atrophy these all are having autosomal recessive inheritance pattern just remember that the rp have both autosomal recessive and autosomal dominant but in the retinitis pigmentosa autosomal dominant is more predominant feature predominant inheritance pattern as compared to autosomal recessive and also remember in the rp the retinitis pigmentosa the main cause the of very severe type of rp is the inheritance pattern x-link recessive so if they ask which is the most severe type of the rp inherited then it is x-link recessive let's see few of the mcqs based upon these theory part okay so the first question today is which of the following statements are true regarding the rp now your options are annular scotoma erg is diagnosis autosomal recessive is the most severe form may be associated with the epiretinal membrane ilm peeling is the treatment strategy that is used so this is a ini ct type question okay so annular scotoma definitely you get a annular or ring scotoma i told you okay this is the annular and ring scotoma okay this which i have seen shown this is the ring scotoma that we get in a rp okay this is definitely correct okay then electro retinogram is diagnostic definitely you would get a decrease in the uh, latent decrease in the amplitude and increase in the latency in these patients autosomal recessive is the most severe form i told you it is not the autosomal recessive the x-ring recessive is the most severe form may be associated with epiretinal membrane so definitely it is associated with epiretinal membrane also it is associated with the posterior subcapsular cataract 
as well as cystoid macularity. Okay, ILM peeling is the strategy that is used here. No, it is not the ILM peeling. What we use is the epiretinal implants. Okay, so what are the correct options? The correct options are one, two, and four. So this comes under option D. Okay, so the answer here is D. Let's move to our next question. Okay, so infant presented with failure to gain weight, retinitis pigmentosa, diarrhea, fatty, foul smelling stools. He may be suffering from which disease? Any one of you who wants to attempt this question? So this patient is having a infastus infant. So whenever the infant is basically having these type of problems, remember the patient may be suffering from A beta lipoproteinemia. In the refsem disease, I told you there is a deficiency of phytanic acid. So phytanic acid, the patient may have more neuropathy. In kern sarre syndrome, I told you there may be a ptosis, bilateral ptosis as well as heart block. The patient may be having a chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia. Usher syndrome, I told you there may be the patient who is having a sensory neural hearing loss also. So in these patients, there may be a RP association. But if it is the fat soluble vitamins which are not absorbed, this patient would have a foul spelling stools. And very important is this patient may have the presentation only from which starts even from the infancy. So the answer here is D that is A beta lipoproteinemia. Okay. Let's move to the next question. A patient present with the night blindness. He is also tells he is also telling that after he passes some time in the dark, then his visibility becomes better as compared to the daytime. The patient may be suffering from which disease? So this is a Mizuo phenomena which the patient is suffering from and Mizuo phenomena is there in the Oguchi disease. Okay, In the gyrate atrophy, there is a punched out lesions in the periphery. In the RP sine pigmenti, there is absence of pigmentation and in Stargardt's disease, the cones are more involved as compared to the rods and the patient would have metamorphosia and the lipofusion deposits in the center of the macula or around the macula. Okay. Okay. So let's move to our last question of the day. The mutation that is responsible for the Stargardt's disease, it is rhodopsin, APCA4, PAC6 or MYOCG. So star guards, remember, the mutation that is responsible is the APCA4 gene because this is basically involved in the clearance of the byproducts of vitamin A metabolism. So these are the yellowish pigments which are basically getting deposited over the macula. Remember, rhodopsin gene is basically responsible for the RP. PAC6 is because responsible for the anterior segment morphogenesis and MYOC gene is more commonly used when we are talking about the steroid response. The increase in the intraocular pressure in the patients who have been using steroids for long. Okay, so these are few important MCQs which can be asked in the uh, exam. So this is the last one. Mid peripheral choroidal atrophic lesions, night blindness, advised arginine free diet, these all are characteristics of which of the following? Mid peripheral choroidal atrophic lesions, night blindness, arginine free diet. This is because this is seen in the gyrate atrophy. Remember, in gyrate atrophy, there is the deficiency of enzyme ornithine aminotransferase. Okay, Chalo. so with this I end my session. If you want to join the plus course or iconics course, you can use my code that is Ophthel10. I think that all of you must have got the 
an academy learning app from the iOS store or the Play Store. If you have not got, you can use the Authel 10 to basically get a free platform also and you can ask the doubts also the doubt removal can be on the unacademy telegram groups the doubt removal can be on the facebook groups and as well as in my live classes and you get a 10 percent discount also so thank you very much for attending this session subscribe for our channel and use the course course uh, code of 10 to unlock the free platform and hit the bell icon for the notifications thank you very much for attending this uh, small very uh, tough topic in ophthalmology that is the retinal dystrophies and i would be back today at 10 pm with another important session so hit the bell icon for notifications so that you can get informed 